Good morning, world. It's 6 17 a.m. in the morning on August 17th. Let's take a look. I'm look I was on a subscriber drive, and my subscribers just froze, which is very unusual. Even though I went from 30 something last week to 46. And I'm looking at my non subscribers list of the people who haven't subscribed to my channel, but they're watching it. That list is, my channel has just taken off, but I'm getting no subscribers. I can't understand that. So to the community out there, if you have a problem subscribing to my channel, let me know. Because basically the news I'm reporting, the person that created Litecoin was a Google engineer. So let's see what, you know, let's not leave that open, uh, an avenue for these people to attack me, not go unnoticed. If anybody's trying to subscribe to my channel and you're having problems, you can send uh, an email to me at johnrusso007 at gmail.com and let me know. Because I find it very weird that one of my... Uh, videos can have over 300 views and I only have 46 subscribers. It's very suspicious to me. I don't trust Google at all. They can shadow ban and run in algorithms to hide or protect people that they're concerned about rather than their uh, channel creators. Okay, here's my subscribe people. Well, of course, the only people who've been subscribed on your channel usually get bored got no dislikes from any of my viewers. I actually lost two subscribers. No, like that would be, but then I also gained two subscribers. Yeah, that, that sort of works out. But I'm just showing you, you know, I don't trust nobody. My not subscribed viewers has basically, look, look at the graph. It's taken off. This is spreading. It really is. So my channel is just spreading, but people are not subscribing. They're just taking the information. Okay, let's go to the video manager. Okay. I don't really get that many views. I wouldn't say I'm a popular channel, but this this video right here is particular interest to people. Look, look at the amount of views these two with the legal documents on. Look how many views there are. 315 and the thumbs up. The next one with the BCH documents, my next highest view at 126. But this video right here, this is the hit right here that's causing all my traffic. That's why I'm like 350 views everybody, and, and thumbs up and I'm not getting any views. I don't have any dislikes. I'm getting positive comments. But it seems like my subscribership is like at a standstill. It did, it did go up last week when this video actually came out. But let's go on to the whole reason Let's go do our, our work for the day. Okay, Litecoins, as you can see, we're stagnating between 74 and 75. We're just floating there. We won't go over 76. So we're going to check the market maker's trades and see if he's not holding the price in place. Seventeen fifty six forty four. 1756.44. So we can clearly see the market makers trade. 1756.44. 1756.44. Those are the market makers trades. They're absolutely the same market size. They're posted on each side of the order book. That's just what the market maker does. We asked Coinbase about it. They said the person who puts up those trades is the market maker. I have proof of that by the New York Department of Financial Services research done on the subject after I complained. 
So now we're going to get the calculator, and we're going to see why there's no activity in the market this early in the morning. That's another reason why I do it this early in the morning. And we're going to do the simple math that disproves what Coinbase said to the New York Department of Financial Services. You know, you know, for an agency like that to be fooled that easily by arithmetic that a eight-year-old can do, that agency is insufficient. Okay, we got eighty-six and a half cents. Now we're going to go down to the bottom. Now I'm doing this early in the morning on a Saturday because there's not going to be too much activity. 73.28. Ah. Uh. You see, without any activity. You can see they're trying to rise the price up, but it'll switch once it gets to that 75. You see these aren't equidistant, and they're not 40 to 44 cents, once again. Now, what I want for this particular video, I want people who are in the Litecoin uh, community and feel that they've been ripped off and this is direct cause from the market maker. I want you to go into and do this simple math and comment on this video, correct or incorrect, if you agree with the information. You have to do with those two formulas you just did are very simple. You take the sell wall, you minus out the mid market price, you'll get this figure. Then you take the mid market price, you minus out the buy wall, you'll get this figure. That'll show you how far are you away from the mid-market price and show off the equidistance. So far, I have never seen it when it was ever equidistance. And then I want you to also show that it's not 40 to 44 cents. That knocks out the, the fabricated uh, excuse that Coinbase gave to the New York Department of Financial Services as not being true by constantly checking it. And I don't want to be the only one checking it. I, I just need to see a list of people that have done the math and confirmed that it is correct. Now we're going to do the average. The average is very easy. You take the outer ring and then the inner ring. Okay, we'll do the outer first, 74 by 88, plus you, you add the inner and the outer, 73 by 28, all right, equals, and you just divide it by 2. And we're less than 1% away. Now, if we sit here for some time, you'll probably see it go as high as 7408, but it will play between those two walls. Because that's what it's designed to do. So you can see we're less than 1% away, a fraction of 1%. How do you find out the percentage of error? That's easy. You take 73 spot 995, and you just simply divide it by 7408. We're not even 1% off. Okay. You see what I'm saying? We're not even 1% off using those two walls as an average. Usually, this is pretty high, okay? Usually, I'll get a 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay? Now, since there's hardly any market activity, you can see this. If you look at the history board. It doesn't look too active to you. So, these numbers will pre are pretty stable, but yet how come the market maker isn't adjusting his prices to be 40 to 44 cents away equidistance? Let's check him again. Okay, he's got to have the world's slowest pot, or he has to be manipulating. 
Now we're at 74.58. We're doing it again. See, see when I, uh, and we're going to spot 99. Fifty-nine. That's the closest I ever seen it to forty-four cents. Then we gotta go seventy-three spot ninety-nine minus seventy-three twenty-eight. <laughs> Even when there's no activity in the book. On a Saturday, he's still not equidistant. So the reason why he wants volatility and he moves the price around is because the volatility actually gets him a higher spread. Are you catching on here, people? Are you catching on? This guy's a snake. Now we'll do the average again. Inner and outer rings. Clear it. You see what I'm talking about? Six cents away, six and a half cents, not even six cents away. You see what happens? How the mid that those two trades rule the, the market, and they're not equidistant. We're seeing it right here. We checked it already before we did, and then we used the numbers for the average, and here we are. And the way it's set up now. The top wall is closer than the bottom wall, and look at the price. It drops. It drops. You're seeing it right here. See, that's why it's good to get up when there's no activity in the box, right? In the trade history, I call this the box. If there's no activity in the trade history box, there's no reason for the market maker not to have these trades equidistant. So this is even more informative when you do it on an early Saturday morning. You see, because if there's no activity, surely the market makers trades would have to be equidistant because there's no reason for them to be out of whack. If he's if if the market stabilized, nobody's buying and selling. Surely his trades have to be equidistant. There should be no uh, volatility or market activity to throw those trades at equidistance, which is something if the weasels at Coinbase were trying to get over, oh, well, there's a lot of volatility, so his trades cannot uh, possibly be accurate enough to keep up with the market as we keep switching to keep up with the market activity. And there is no market activity to a virtual standstill. We're still not equidistant. We'll do it again. This is the second time we did it. Look. You see? The price, the walls are moving, but they're still not equidistant, and they still have an effect on the price. And they're moving without any activity in the, in the trade history. Barely any. So from here... To hear you, you know, I, you, you, this is so obvious. You got to be retarded not to see this. You really do. You have to be semi, you know, room temperature IQ. Now we're gonna do this again for the third time. Now I want everybody to go in there and start doing the math and just confirm. Just put. Conf I check the math. Confirm. I check the math. Confirm. Just answer that that way. Seventy-four fifty-eight. Eighty seven cents, right? Now we're going to do seventy three spot seventy one. There's barely any activity, and yet his 
his trades are still not equidistant. Sixty-six cents. No, no, no. This even proves it even more that he's friggin' uh, uh, doing shit. Now we're gonna do the averages again. Nah, people. You see, people? You see what's going on here with this market maker? Now that the market's at a standstill on a Saturday, there's no market activity. So there's no justification for his trades for being for not being equidistant. Because I had a feeling that he was going to say, well, our trades can't possibly be in equidistance with the market being so volatile. Here is, we got the market at a virtual standstill, right? And we're doing, we're doing, uh, the, we're checking the math again. So his, we just closed his, his any uh, uh, door of excuses right in his face. You see? You see? You see? It's all a fable. It's all a fable. This market is absolutely under the control. The, the mid-market price is absolutely being controlled by the market maker. There's no activity in this book. Why would they not be uh, equidistant, even if it's not 40 to 44 cents? There's no activity in the book to force, force those prices to react to the market. Yet, here they are moving around just like uh, it's another volatile day. It's, it's nonsense, like the market's so busy that he has to adjust his trades to keep equidistant. It's a, that's a lie, that's a fabrication. That, that, if they were thinking of using that as, as a, way, a way to weasel out that the market maker is just a uh, robot, can't keep up with the market prices to keep equidistant, that's nonsense. Because here we have a day where there's barely any movement in the book and he's still not equidistant. What is your robot made of? Wood? With termites in it? So here you go. Any, This goes further to prove what I say to be true. Okay? Doing the math on a, a day when there's hardly any activity on the market versus a day that there has heavy activity on the market and it's still the same thing. So if, when when it comes time for Coinbase to concoct the excuse, the, the 40 to 44 cents excuse is out the window. So on that two paragraphs right then and there, if one of those statements in that paragraph proves to be untrue, more than likely the whole two paragraphs on the letter I got from the New York Department of Financial Services that was given to them by Coinbase is untrue. If they lie on you one thing, the whole thing is a lie. We have never seen 40 to 44 cents, and we've never seen an equidistance. It's, so what, what would you say if somebody told you 2 plus 2 is 5, and then you went and found out 2 plus 2 is 4? Would you accept that statement that 2 plus 2 equals 5 is true? No, you would not. You would not. That's that's how math works. Here we are doing the math. Your figures, the mid-market price is supposed to equal distance from the mid-market price as not to interfere with the mid-market price. We check where your, your trades are. The figures are telling me they're not equal distance. So therefore, it is interfering with the mid-market price because you're manipulating. It's that easy. So these simple formulas work. Um, the CFTC, I trained five of their people. I think a lot of those views that you see on my video, uh, on my YouTube channel, we actually see why this video is getting so many uh, hits. It's because um, they're going in and they're using this. The agencies are actually using this to train their staff now. 
okay? And I have pro a prominent YouTuber. I'll even show it to you. He, he commented it on it. Everybody knows Omar. Keep up the vids, man. I'm on your side, by the way. All the books are manipulated in some fashion. Already taken and then given. It's great that you're taking steps to get clarity and amend these issues. That's more than most people do. Good job, Mr. Russo. Thanks for sharing this and getting it out there. You understand what's going on here? And I think that's why this has got so many views. Because this one YouTuber who's very popular, who's been checked and verified, who has 120 subscribers. You see? He has 120,000 subscribers. But everybody's afraid to subscribe. To tell you the truth, I think people are just afraid to subscribe to my channel. I actually think they, they're afraid to. He's, he's looking at the information, but he won't subscribe to my channel. I don't see him in my subscribers. There's a fear here that they don't want to be involved because they see all this case. They're scared to death. Can you blame them? These guys came and tried to attack my YouTube channel, in which they failed. My YouTube channel is intact. Let's see if that video with the email, right, that has to do with the email, is, is, is had a complaint against it. Let's go see if they took it down. That's easy to see. That was just recently. where I contacted him on the email, and then he turned around and said, hey, you're not supposed to give my business email because it's private. Never mind that you say you deal with law enforcement and you're covering up for a company that's robbing people. And I just go to show people Coinbase's response to a major theft. And this isn't no small theft, people. Wait, this is easy just to go here. I don't know why I'm doing that. Now, I did take one YouTube off because I could understand I made that private. Of course, it has creative, it has somebody else's content in it. And they said it was a copyright violation. So I made it private. That would be this one here. See, I locked it. So now, nobody can really see it anymore. It's private. I use that for entertainment purposes for myself so I can get a good laugh. See, nothing else. YouTube didn't do didn't give in to him because I read use, uh, the, the YouTube's user agreement and it says that you can't say an email that is used from a company is, is, is a privacy violation. I got so many videos. It, it, it almost comes to a point that I'm going to start taking down some of these videos because a lot of them are just redundant. And I could just archive them or make them private and just keep like a few that give the most explanation for what this channel is about. That might be the route to go. In, in this case, I'm not using this as really um, to get subscribers or make money off of. I'm using this as a, a tool to reach the public and warn people. So really, my subscriber base See, it hasn't been taken down. So I, I got it archived anyway. Even if they took it down and they had to go to a court of law, I have it archived anyway. And they haven't taken it down. They haven't said it's a violation of the privacy policy. They haven't sent me a message. It was for, for review 